Today's video is sponsored by the team over at Wadham. Wadham is a complete Bitcoin mining solutions provider and the largest distributor of Bitcoin mining equipment in the United States. Wadham is your one-stop shop for everything ASIC mining, from Bitcoin miners ranging from the S19 Pro Hydro all the way up to the Antminer S19J Pro. If you're looking to take mining to the next level, Wadham has you covered. With facility build-out services, turnkey mining containers, power transformers, and finally complete hosting services. Check them out at the link down below in the video description. Thanks again to Wadham for supporting the hobbyist miner community. What's going on miners? Welcome back to the Hobbyist Miner channel. Well, it's been over a week. I thought we might as well give you guys some results on how our quote Bitcoin Cannon did. So let's go ahead and take a look at the shed. Let's go over to the intake side first, give you a glance. All right. So on our intake side, as we showed before, we have this hooded vent here running. It does have a kind of critter guard underneath there. You can hear it running pretty good. Good amount of airflow getting sucked in here. You can feel it blowing by my hand. Uh, let's go on the exhaust side and then we'll show you guys how we built it inside. Exhaust side looking good. Look, you can see the grass moving. Give you an idea. Air is coming out nice and warm right there on our other side. And uh, let's go inside and show you guys the results. So as you guys can tell, it 100% worked. Which I'm super thrilled about. It's been amazing. Just mopped and vacuumed the shed before we did the video. I'll show you some of the stuff we've done more recently. Kind of made things more into like a little workbench inside here. Got that all set up. I was tired of going in and out of the house for cables and tools and stuff like that. Um, same thing on this side over here. I was tired of going inside for ethernet cables or for the C13 to C14 cables. So I only have uh, two rigs on right now. That's gonna change uh, here soon. Um, we have our two, this, this rig on, and this rig on, which is our two flux rigs. Let's go around this side here, is that's where we're gonna start our journey. So flux on this one, and the flux on this one here. Everything else is off, um, except for like our ASIC miner here, um, for our ASIC, and then we do have our Ipolo mini ASICs up here. More Ipolos, those are all on as well. So let's take a look at how the project went. I'll give you guys a little tour. All right, she's in place. She's been working 100% and I love it. I love it. I love it. I can't tell you how happy I am. Um, I wanted to wait a week to make sure everything went well. No fires for those of you guys that have been uh, hoping against me. So uh, let's take a tour. So this is the intake side that you guys saw outside. Comes in. Uh, you can see we have our foil as well as a hose clamp goes through eight inch into here. And now afterthought, but I ended up having to build like a little table to raise this up to keep this more straight. This has a little dip in it, but it's not too bad. Gives some ability for flexibility and stuff like that. So I built this little table down here and here is our filter box. And this here is our temperature probe. So this is actually inside of our filter box. So if I go up here, you guys can see it's at 61 outside right now. So when it hits the temperature of 60, it goes to the speed of eight. When it drops below 60, it goes down to the speed of five, uh, is how that works. And the ASIC still loves it. So the way it's determining that is inside of my filter box here. You can see I got this cable in here and look, there's the probe. So it's taking in the intake temps and I can put my hand in here. I can feel the air flying through here. This filter, I'm probably gonna have to replace pretty often. Um, let's see if I can give you guys a view. Yep, there you go. You can kind of see all the bugs and stuff down there already after just a week. So I'm probably gonna have to replace one of those filters a month, the way it's looking. I'm gonna try to take it out and uh, rinse it off and wash it to see if I can reuse it, let it dry out. Uh, so we'll have to see what happens here. Come on, trying to do this with one hand is rough. Can we do it? There we go. So filter box is in place. I did put some uh, 
some L brackets to hold it nice stiff and in place. I didn't want it to move. This isn't locked down or anything like that. Uh, my electrician's coming tomorrow, so I'm gonna get uh, the electric plugs. I'm gonna put a few new electric plugs in the shed. Um, some oversight that I didn't think about along here because the inline fan does run off of your traditional 120, so we'll have to get that wired up. So anyways, let's follow along our airflow journey. So it comes in on this side, another hose clamp on this side with more foil, runs along into here. It's then going into a, another uh, of our foil right here and it goes into our uh, inline fan. So the inline fan, you can see the arrow pointing that way. Intake is pulling through the filter box and going through here. And uh, let's go around the other side. All right. Okay. So on this side here, show you guys, comes in to our intake shroud. Uh, this is the shroud from uh, Fruits and Associates that you guys saw in the previous video. I'll put a link in the upper right hand corner of the full install of this. And as you guys can see, the airflow comes in. It also goes this way and goes into our ASIC miner here. Um, and uh, the ASIC miner you can see is up. I put it up on another, its own little table. I do have it, the shroud screwed down. It had holes built in with the shroud on each side to make it nice and level. So the nice thing is, is not only is it making it level, but it's keeping it off the ground just in case I ever get a little water in here for some reason. So it's gonna go ahead and keep these safe, which is what I need. Um, now, one thing, I have the ethernet here, and then the power, it's kind of tucked down in here. You guys can see the power is run up, and I installed my, uh, my last PDU. So I built this little shelf here, uh, a little bracket, should I say, not really a shelf, a bracket, with two little pieces on each side, and that sits nicely in there. Um, and then my C13 and C14 cables run down and go right into the ASIC itself. And then the PDU actually goes from here, goes down and comes up and runs in here. And here's the power that we're using right now. So it's only using 2,850 watts. Uh, if you look on their website, it's up around uh, 3,068 watts is what the S19J Pro is set for. So removing those fans do a really good job when it comes down to cutting down on your electric. Now, this guy here does use 100 watts, but that's still a savings. You know, it puts us up to 2950, so we're saving about 100 watts. And now one thing I found was the cooler you keep your ASIC, the less electricity it's using. And I know there's some reasoning behind that with like heat and all that types of stuff. So if I turn my inline fan up to 10, right now it's at eight, this, the wattage of the ASIC will actually go down. Uh, so something to keep in mind. So anyways, we come out the exhaust side, then go through uh, more of our eight inch ductwork, and then we go out the back side here. So this thing has been running for one week. It has worked amazing. Uh, I've been super happy with it. Let me walk on this side here, talk a little bit more about our airflow control. So, I'm gonna to have to adjust this seasonally. Uh, I did take some, actually here, I'll show you my little book here. I took some time to do some notes inside here and did some testing. So you guys can see if it's 59 degrees outside, the fan speed, I put it on 70, on seven. The inlet uh, is 47 to 44. Now I found quickly that you don't need to worry about, you don't need to be as concerned about the inlet temps on your ASIC. You actually wanna be worried about your outlet temps. So if you jump down, if I go down to speed six at 59 Fahrenheit outside, you get to 70 to 67. And then when you go to speed five, so it's really slow at 60, your inlet, your outlet temps are 81 to 77, which is still safe. But if I take my inline fan and go down to four, uh, it goes ahead and actually overheats. And I found some notes online at 90 C on the outlet, the, uh, it will actually start to hash down like thermal throttle. And then at 96 C, it actually stops hashing to, uh, to go ahead and protect itself. So on the controller, on the AC Infinity controller, I have the off setting to five and the on setting to eight. And then there's a, there's a trigger that says turn on at 60 F. So it goes to eight speed, turn off below 60 F. So it goes down to five. So this is something I'll have to adjust seasonally, but this is gonna get me by uh, for right now with um, fall and into winter. One of my biggest concerns was taking this down to the speed of five when it's 30 degrees outside, when it's snowing outside. Like my concern was it being too cold, 
And that's something I'll have to come out here and continue to look at and continue to learn with. But I wanted to take notes and then I can label it for the seasons so I know in reality where I need to go ahead and sit it at. But I'm so happy uh, that I was to do this. If I was to redo it again, I did consider putting the probe down on the exhaust side and just having everything trigger off of the exhaust temps as those are what kind of what is the most important uh, within the book here. But guys, the Bitcoin Canon project is done and it is working and I could not be happier. So if you guys are looking, a few people have reached out to me. I'll put the hooded vents, the filter box, the AC Infinity inline fan, the shroud system, uh, and the PDU. I'll put all of that down below uh, in the description and also in one of the first few comments with links to everything. Um, so if you guys are interested, I do have a discount code for the AC Infinity. It saves you 15% on the entire purchase of the AC Infinity inline fan. And I have a discount code as well from Fruits and Associates for the uh, shroud system that we used around our ASIC. But guys, I am so happy to report that we are quote, running our ASIC fanless, except for like airline fan, but fanless when it comes down to those loud, crazy, noisy fans. Uh, also to give you guys an idea, when I had the fans on on this outside my shed near my neighbor's house, if you guys remember that, it was at 70 dB. Now I'm down to 60 dB. So I've cut out 10 dB entirely just by going ahead and going to the system and my eyes well worth it to go ahead and avoid one of my neighbors going ahead and filing a, dis uh, a noise ordinance dispute or something like that. Um, so it's a huge win. Well guys, that's it for today. I appreciate you guys coming to hang out with me. Now what I, this allows me to do guys is if I will get another ASIC, I can do another, like build a whole shelf and do another whole layer with the inline fans, with the inlets, with the exhaust. I could do another one or two more ASICs on this side, just stacking everything uh, if I was truly interested because it works, which is awesome. Well guys, that's it for today. I appreciate you guys joining me. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up. And finally, don't forget to subscribe. Take care.